What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. Uh, today, I have a new uh, kind of uh, in-depth analysis uh, of the first part here of my new bachelor thesis on multi-signature in Lightning Network and how we can make that work and why it is important. Uh, and I think this is going to be a really interesting paper, and I'm extremely looking forward uh, to continue writing it. It's been a delightful condensing my uh, thoughts on this subject so far, uh, and I have a thousand and one more questions and no clue how exactly we can implement this, uh, but at least uh, we can accumulate this knowledge and try to understand it uh, in some way, uh, try to condense it into uh, such a scientific process uh, under praxeological reasoning and, of course, well-code implementation. Um, so today I want to just talk a bit about uh, the overall structure of this thesis uh, and which problems I want to uh, discuss and uh, which uh, pain points I want to solve. Uh, so uh, for this, uh, let's jump into the screen share here on my personal website towards liberty.com. And when you type in slash multisig, uh, you will be guided here to this little page uh, with a, uh, the abstract and uh, a link to the GitHub repository. Uh, so the official title is Non-Simulated Shared Ownership of Bitcoin with Multi-Signatures in the Lightning Network. A uh, very long and convoluted title, but I think it's quite meaningful uh, if we drill down on it. Uh, and for that, uh, let's read the abstract here. The universal axiom of scarcity is defined as the potential of conflict of control over a good. Either Alice or Bob can hold and use a gold coin. There is no possibility that both at the same time have full disposal over it. Because of this fundamental scarcity, property rights emerge as a sound and logical structure to allocate resources throughout time. There are, however, non-scarce goods, which are not restricted to individual control and use. Like ideas, music, or speech, these Libre goods can be shared with whomever without the need of sacrifice by the initial creator. The poet still knows his poem after he has performed it on stage, yet the audience has gained the knowledge conveyed. Thus, there is no need for property rights and ownership in the realm of ideas and mind. In Bitcoin, a unspent transaction output can only be spent when a previously committed script is computed as valid. Although the Bitcoin script is not Turing complete, it is still exhaustive with several opcodes which can be constructed into smart contracts. The most basic script is a pay to single public key hash, where the proof of knowledge of one private key with a cryptographic signature returns valid and thus enables the transfer of Bitcoin to another commitment script. Only with the knowledge of a non-scarce piece of information can the property rights of a scarce Bitcoin be proven and enforced. Oh, I'm missing here one, uh, one sentence. Uh, that is actually supposed to be, uh, there is another major uh, opcode in the Bitcoin script that is heavily used. And that is the M of N multi-signature, uh, where you require the knowledge of M private keys in order to compute the script as valid and thus move the Bitcoin again. And this allows for non-simulated shared ownership of Libre sound money, which is a groundbreaking innovation with vast consequences. This thesis explains the universal divide between scarce and non-scarce goods, the emergence and importance of private property and the public commons, the novel invention of non-simulated shared ownership of Bitcoin, the basics of Bitcoin script and how multisig is used on the first layer blockchain, and the basics of Lightning Network and its use of multisig. The novel research of this thesis is to suggest how different types of multi-sig payments can, uh, channels can be constructed, updated, and closed, how multi-sig access rights to a lightning node might work, and estimates whether such a multi-sig payment channel is useful for liquidity routing. 
concluding with different use cases and business models possible with Lightning Multisig. Uh, so, Pierce, this is uh, pretty much what I want to cover here in this a very interesting topic of non-simulated shared ownership uh, of Bitcoin. Uh, this really is a, a breathtaking invention uh, that is possible here with, with Satoshi Nakamoto's creation uh, in the sense that we can now share and in indestructibly prove uh, and irrevocably uh, share the property rights to a sound money. Uh, exactly the same as you as an individual can defend your property rights uh, with a single signature. Uh, so there is the exact same defense for a, a single individual or for a group of individuals to claiming their property rights with Bitcoin. Uh, and that is insane. It, it, it literally shatters the divide of the universe. <laughs> uh, and the, it, it really is it's it's tough to underestimate how important uh, this uh, this yeah th this idea is that we can now together collaboratively um, allocate these resources in a way that uh, we can actually prove and uh, ourselves enforce with cryptography uh, the property rights uh, and defend them. Uh, so that is that is incredible, uh, and of course, multisig has already uh, several awesome use cases and, and business models uh, like custody, uh, custodial uh, solutions, right? Semi-custodial solutions, uh, where there are just extra defense layers uh, into the defense of your property rights. So it might even be that a multisig is a better defense as a property uh, on on your property rights as a single signature would be. Uh, if you yourself control all your keys, or maybe if you share some of that property right uh, with someone else, um, it it really is uh, it is crazy how uh, how uh, shattering here the, this is. Um, and maybe let's uh, let's now go here onto the GitHub uh, GitHub.com slash Max Hillebrand slash Lightning Multisig uh, is where you can find uh, this research repository, and it contains uh, all the different things that I've written so far and condensed. Um, not yet quite up to date, still a lot of things that I uh, need to uh, catch up on that I've worked on in the last couple of months on, on more of an ideal uh, side, not really writing it down. Um, uh, but yeah, here's the abstract, of course. Uh, and now I would say let's talk about the structure and what I actually want to talk about here. Uh, I've somewhat scheduled it into five parts. Um, and. Uh, yeah, let's go through it. So the first part, I think, is really important uh, to explain uh, very thoroughly uh, and uh, the, the axiom of scarcity and why this exists and uh, how or why it is such a axiomatic and universal uh, base lying ground uh, or ground brick uh, which we can build upon. Uh, and that emerges both uh, private property uh, and uh, the public comments of ideas and, and mind space, cyberspace. Uh, so this is, uh, it is quite, uh, I think, important uh, to focus some time here on this to really convey why multisig is so important. Uh, and the method which I would approach here uh, is praxeology. Uh, so I start with uh, the one single axiom that there is scarcity as defined in the abstract earlier. Uh, and then we see uh, at, uh, through logical and uh, uh, reasonable um, common sense approaches and, and thought processes uh, that explore all the different arrays uh, that things can go out of this ground, uh, ground fundament. Uh, then we can further explore how we might end up here uh, in higher level uh, orders, like, for example, then here, a mutual beneficial exchange or non-simulated shared ownership. Uh, but making sure that all these higher level uh, understandings are all still in accordance to the fundamental axiom uh, of scarcity and non-scarcity. And uh, that will be more of the, let's say, um, economical slash philosophical, uh, well, praxeological part uh, of, this, um, of this paper. Uh, and I, I really want to uh, ex explore a bit further what I've already started in my last paper uh, on anarchy and money. Uh, there was also a chapter on, on scarcity and, and property rights. Uh, and a mutual beneficial exchange. But I want to condense it here very much more focused on the axiom of scarcity, uh, and especially then uh, leading and focused towards the non-simulated shared ownership of Bitcoin. Uh, 
Okay, then uh, part two. Uh, I uh, think that uh, I, we really need to make sure that we have a bit more uh, structure here for uh, the basics of Bitcoin script. Uh, so here on chain transactions or just uh, Bitcoin script in on the Bitcoin uh, time chain itself uh, to that are the scripts that defend uh, the property rights of these Bitcoin and the different tools that we have at our disposal here, which would be, of course, the public key uh, hash um, and then the pay to script hash uh, as a the, as the two uh, basic device here. And then, of course, multi-signature uh, focusing here on that and how it is uh, applied and the different scripts that you can do. Uh, maybe also here adding uh, some, some vault features or time lock features, uh, depending on how, how deep I can uh, go into this, uh, also with the restraints of only 60 pages. Um, Yes, but after covering here the very basics uh, of the Bitcoin script as kind of an introduction to uh, the more uh, complex things following, uh, we then cover, of course, in part three also the basics of the Lightning Network, uh, as this is a very novel and new uh, approach here and that is not yet uh, well documented and, and understood uh, by the uh, broad readership. So I think we need to cover um, the Lightning Network basics, and especially, I would say, payment channels, as this is the, the main part here that we're using. Uh, and I split this up here into three separate, the three separate stages uh, of the life cycle of a payment channel, uh, which would be the funding transaction uh, from the single SIG uh, of Alice and Bob into the multi-SIG of the Lightning Network payment channels. Then the commitment transactions, which are handled off-chain uh, and enforced uh, via the smart contract of the Lightning multi-sig uh, and time lock. And then the closing transaction and the different scenarios of how such a payment channel uh, can come to end, either the collaborative close uh, or the unilateral close uh, or the forced close. Uh, so these different uh, things on, again, how we can use these smart contracts to protect the property rights of the commitment transaction, the current state of this multi-signature. Uh, so again, here tying this not just into the technical side, uh, but also, of course, here onto the, the proxiological side of scarcity uh, and uh, focusing or, or trying to find a, a overlap uh, of these two uh, things here. Then I would say here starts the really novel part of uh, the thesis, uh, which is then uh, part four, Lightning Network Multisig. Uh, and here I want to explore how we can combine uh, the multi-signature um, approach or at least how we can achieve the same result to have non-simulated, and that is very important, um, shared ownership of Bitcoin. So it's easy to have a paper claim and to somehow simulate that, oh yeah, trust me, I will give you access uh, to your gold coin in the future as well. Uh, but that is a central point of failure. That is not sound. We need to have a non-simulated, cryptographically proven uh, and, and defendable and sound uh, implementation of multi-signature in the Lightning Network. And I think that is going to be extremely difficult uh, it's easy to, to generate some simulated uh, shared ownership, uh, but the non-simulated shared ownership is extremely complex, and especially to do it right, uh, and, and to make sure that it actually works in even the worst cases uh, of adversaries. Uh, so this is going to be uh, very interesting, and of course here the novel part, uh, so I will probably make a bunch of mistakes, and I will absolutely need a bunch of help uh, from all the awesome Lightning Network contributors. Uh, so I have four basic different approaches uh, that I somehow think are worth exploring, uh, and I do not know yet if all of them end up uh, being mentioned in the theses. Um, has, of course, again, uh, restraints. Uh, so one would be M of N key aggregation uh, on top of a regular two out of two Lightning Network payment channel. Uh, so that would be something like Schnorr signature key aggregation, or which hopefully is coming with one of the next Bitcoin upgrades. Um, and uh, I, I will assume that Schnorr uh, will be implemented uh, as it is such a vast improvement, especially with uh, the, the nuances here of multi-sig. 
Um, and I think we can do some cool cryptographic magic and that hides the complexity uh, of the multi-sig so that it looks on chain exactly like a regular Lightning Network channel would look. Uh, but in the back end, uh, Alice, Bob and Charlie need to aggregate two out of three keys in order to produce the one key or a signature that corresponds to one of these two of two payment channels uh, and the other one here belonging to David, uh, for example. Uh, so this might be one possible approach. Again, I have no clue if it actually works out. Then would be a commitment transaction redeem script of M of N uh, plus one. So this would basically be enforce the M of N multi-signature transaction on the chain itself, on the commitment uh, where usually it is a two of two multi-signature. Here change the commitment of the funding transaction um, uh, and uh, sorry, of the commitment transaction here, uh, to be not a two of two, but a M of N plus one. Uh, and there might be some more complex ways you can do that with Bitcoin script, um, but it would be possible that it's not two of two, but rather you need to have always the uh, the key of David and either uh, and two out of three of Alice, Bob and Charlie as well. So it has to always be David, but two out of three of Alice, Bob and Charlie. And that is, I think, another way that we could do it. Uh, again, much more complexity on chain, uh, larger, transa larger transaction size that's more expensive. Um, and not quite sure if this might break uh, some other parts of Lightning Network, as it, of course, adds additional complexity. And that is always very difficult to handle. We could also have M of N access rights to a node with a two of two payment channel uh, via macaroons or RPCs. Uh, so basically, just as you can connect, uh, for example, your Jewel browser extension uh, here with RPCs or macaroons, uh, and then you can manage your two of two payment channels, your regular Lightning Network payment channels uh, with this uh, wallet, so to say. Uh, so it might be possible to integrate here this M of N access right through the wallet interface and through some uh, uh, some yeah cryptographically enforceable access rights uh, such as macaroons or RPCs uh, or, or well, maybe some some other uh, magic. This uh, can be explored as well. Again, here I think it's very tricky uh, to realize the difference between uh, between having a uh, simulated access rights and non-simulated access rights, right? It's easy uh, that, I could, uh, that I could connect here my Joule browser extension to my node. Uh, but then if I have hardware access to the node, might I revoke this access to Joule, right? Uh, because if I do, uh, if I can revoke access uh, to, if, if I can revoke these multi-sig access rights, well, then they are no longer non-simulated. Then they are simulated. And the ultimate property right uh, is then at the node operator who has the possibility to revoke these access rights. Uh, so again, uh, easy to do non-simulation, uh, easy to do simulation, damn difficult to do non-simulation. Um, also here, hindering the pre-image release of a two of two payment channel uh, route with M of N and an unlock script. Um, so this uh, kind of goes here back to uh, one of the basics of Lightning Network, the routing. Uh, of course, the Lightning Network is a well network of Lightning payment channels. Uh, and we've explored payment channels and we've explored routing. And maybe there's a way of using routing uh, to enforce the multi-sig. Uh, for example, that we have three individual, um, two of two or three individual full nodes with unique uh, and regular two of two Lightning Network payment channels. But they can only uh, they can only get there uh, or they can only route a payment uh, if two of three or two of two uh, or some other multi-sig uh, of these uh, three different nodes uh, do collaborate and give their permission to use that money. Uh, that might be something as well working here with the routing network uh, and not with the payment channel aspect of the Lightning Network. Uh, very difficult because routing is... Um, yeah, not, not the easiest thing to do. And I'm not well versed in the technical sides of this. Uh, so again, uh, I, I need your help because <laughs> I'm a, to a total noob uh, in all this.
Um, uh, but yeah, then so after explaining uh, the, the fundamental axiom of scarcity and why it is important, uh, the basics of Bitcoin on-chain and Lightning Network, as well then as talking about the Lightning Network multisig and the different approaches, uh, I think a good conclusion uh, would be, uh, though it might be worthwhile uh, putting this up front, but I think I'll keep it at the end, uh, is the different use cases, the entrepreneurial aspect uh, of this entire endeavor. Now we have built the tool uh, and we understand what the tool can do. Uh, but, well, what are we going to do with it, uh, actually? Uh, so here I will propose some entrepreneurial activities that the individual can partake in order to remove some uneasiness. Uh, and thus I will uh, explain a, uh, a problem that exists. Uh, for example, um, a, uh, uh, for example the, uh, the problem of losing uh, your access uh, to one of your keys and then a solution on how we can use, for example, M of N, uh, second factor authentication, um, enforced with non-simulated shared ownership with multi-signature, uh, where then you can lose N minus M private keys without losing the, ex the proof of property right uh, to your Bitcoin. Uh, or then how we can uh, have some additional redundancy uh, and uh, protection against theft uh, with N of N uh, multi-signature. And uh, for example, how, how here uh, we can, if a malicious actor steals or copies one of the non-scarce pieces of information uh, that is our private key, uh, which he can easily do because it is non-scarce, uh, then we need to protect ourselves that this does not happen. And here, N of N multisig is a great way of strengthening uh, the Bitcoin protocol that utilizes non-scarce information in order to enforce scarce property rights uh, or property rights on a scarce good. And this is the, the, here, N of N can actually help of strengthening uh, here this non-simulated shared ownership of Bitcoin, uh, which is uh, which is awesome, and it can even be done here on a, a single-party uh, access. Uh, we also have multi-party, multi-signature, uh, which could be, for example, a group fund management, right? Uh, you don't trust a uh, given full control uh, of the funds to your business partner? Well, uh, do a non-simulated shared control of these funds with your business partner. Uh, and uh, then you can, uh, for example, both commit uh, one Bitcoin each uh, to a kind of a, a treasury war chest uh, from which you then can only spend with the two of two or maybe a two of three multi-signature. Uh, and thus you commit funds and then you can spend them only collaboratively. Uh, and th that is, of course, really useful. Uh, and also escrows, a major part here uh, that, that help uh, for, uh, for exchanges uh, of things. So these bonds and commitment bonds uh, that you, you put up a bond, a security deposit into a two of three multi-signature uh, with you and the trading partner and a third independent arbitrator uh, who does then the escrow service without actually taking full custo uh, custody, without taking full ownership of these big Bitcoin, uh, but actually with non-simulated shared ownership of Bitcoin and how this will uh, revolutionize the entire exchange business as we see it with decentralized self-hosted sovereign exchanges like the BISC decentralized network uh, and, and it heavily relies on escrows. Uh, we also have here vaults and uh, I would say just um, uh, money warehouses with other, uh, with security experts that take uh, that you grant non-simulated shared ownership over your Bitcoin uh, in a way that they protect you and your property rights, uh, maybe with some additional time locks. And uh, however, under the condition that you never give up full ownership over your Bitcoin, you alone can always uh, still walk away without the security um, vault firm. And that is very cool, very important here again. On, and I think these are just some of the use cases. I might add more, more to be honest. Uh, but uh, <laughs> alone, you could probably write books uh, just on the nuances of implementation of these couple uh, use cases here. Uh, but I think you realize just how uh, fundamental we have to rethink our entire uh, financial ecosystem uh, and uh, not just our financial ecosystem, but our, our entire ecosystem of property rights and the defense of these property rights. Now that we have Bitcoin, a, a, a protocol, a non-scarce protocol that in its ingenious design emerges non-simulated, proven scarcity uh, where we can share ownership 
over scarce asset thanks to the non-scarce protocol uh, that emerges the scarcity. Uh, it, it is quite breathtaking and a, a, a very, very a revolutionizing idea. Uh, so I think this is one of the many novel approaches that Bitcoin as Libre sound money uh, offers. And one of the very, very interesting parts that you could spend hours and hours and hours digging deeper and learning more about it. Um, so yeah, I, I think here uh, it's, it's a compelling thesis. Uh, what do you think? Um, it's, it's, I would say, a, a good mixture of the economic side, the technical side, and the entrepreneurial side. Uh, and I th I, that is really something that, that I wanted to do. Uh, both explore uh, with praxeological reasoning uh, the nuances and the philosophy uh, of scarcity, uh, the, the why, and then also the, the aspect of having a, or of, of, of digging down into the technicals and seeing how it is enforced. Uh, and then ultimately uh, condensing what we might be able to do with this. Uh, and that is, of course, entrepreneurial speculation. Uh, and uh, no longer a, a praxeological or, well, of course, somewhat a praxeological approach, uh, but, but very much a entrepreneurial endeavor. And uh, not to be confused with the sound and irrefutable logic that I propose in the first uh, chapter, um, or first part with scarcity, uh, the last entrepreneurial task is just me guessing which problems we can solve with this tool. Uh, but of course, we need to implement it and see if these problems actually exist and if there are willing customers who uh, want uh, to uh, or who need these problems to be solved and then how we can provide tools to the individual uh, to help alleviate that pain and that uncertainty. Um, so, yeah, uh, please really tell me what you think. Uh, of course, uh, as, as always, this is published um, uh, or it is written under an open source process and published under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License. Uh, so please, 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 if you want to contribute, uh, if you think that this topic is of interest and that you have some uh, valuable ideas that you want to share with me, uh, please reach out. Uh, you can, of course, do so here at towardsliberty.com uh, slash contact. Here you'll find my PGP signed um, uh, contact ways, uh, either email or Twitter or Telegram uh, would be, of course, fine. Uh, but of course, the beautiful thing here uh, with having GitHub uh, as a research repository uh, is that you can go up here and open a issue, uh, as some have already done, uh, and then just chat a little uh, about what you want to uh, talk about and, and how you think uh, that you uh, th that you can help me here in condensing this. So uh, thanks here, of course, uh, to René Picard uh, for his awesome work and also in many private conversations, uh, as well as Prahalad uh, Bilavadi uh, for his nice idea of uh, uh, on how we can implement this. And of course, all the other awesome people uh, who helped me, uh, j j maybe just here, yeah. Let's go quickly into the research. Uh, <laughs> just how long this is on, uh, we could use multi-party ECDSA. Uh, so basically um, multi-threshold signatures like N of N or M of N, uh, but doing it with today's uh, Bitcoin implementation of ECDSA uh, without any software requires. Uh, so there are a couple of cool things that we can do uh, here. And uh, again, like all these uh, heroes here have done a incredible amount of research uh, and uh, yeah, especially here, uh, Stepan uh, Sniagov uh, has helped me a lot in understanding this and his work uh, with, uh, with Lightning Network is great. Gregory Maxwell, of course, uh, and Andrew Polstra, uh, Jan Cernin, uh, Peter Woolley, of course, uh, with all their work on Schnorr signatures, uh, which again, I will somewhat assume uh, that they are coming to Bitcoin. Um, Jonas Nicker as well, a uh, great helper. Um, and uh, thus, I have here a lot, a lot of research uh, uh, to pick up on here for Schnorr signatures and exactly how it is. And especially here, for example, um, Taproot uh, or Graftroot and uh, Musik, uh, the Schnorr multi-signature implementation, uh, which I can't yet find here uh, quickly on the fly. Uh, also, BLS, just as a little aside, uh, might be a secondary implementation of signatures coming to Schnorr, uh, coming other than Schnorr. Uh, but I... I don't think that it will, uh, so I just link to it here a bit. And of course, a bunch of references on uh, the Lightning Network, uh, academic references here mainly. Uh, so again, this is long research already uh, and has been going on for a while. Uh, so good to have this. Uh, 
and of course some overall uh, research. But especially here, uh, that's where I wanted to go to a um, a alphabetically uh, ordered list of all the awesome peers that have helped me understand all this. Uh, so thank you very much to Adam Fiskor, Andreas Antonopoulos, Andrew Polstra, Alex Rossworth, Gregory Maxwell, uh, Jeff Gallas, uh, Justin Carter. Oh yeah, Justin Carter's work on multi-sig is outstanding. Uh, and actually he has sparked the idea of non-simulated shared ownership uh, in my mind. Uh, so thank you very much uh, to Justin uh, for, for all your work you've done so far for multi-sig and I'm looking forward uh, to what else you will here. Uh, Jonas Nick, uh, Joseph Poon, of course, creator or, or, uh, of the Lightning Network, uh, Konstantin Nick, uh, Mark Friedenbach here, Merch, uh, also helped me a lot, uh, Nicolas Dorier, uh, Peter Woolley, uh, Rene, Rene Picard, uh, Olawa uh, Osuntokun, uh, and of course, all the others uh, hanging out on Slack and uh, being available for questions uh, and feature requests and, and just overall help <laughs> because this is difficult uh, and I really do need help here, especially uh, with the implementation of Lightning Network multi-sig transaction. Uh, so if you are a, a bit proliferate here uh, in Bitcoin script, uh, please, please, please check if all this here uh, is actually valid uh, because I have no clue if it actually is. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Piers, thank you very much here actually for joining me again. Um, here uh, you find all the information on towardsliberty.com and then on the GitHub uh, at uh, github.com slash maxillibrand uh, slash lightning multisig. Um, reach out at towardsliberty.com slash contact and uh, throw a couple sats uh, if you have them just at your disposal. Uh, that would be amazing. Uh, and Piers, uh, let's contribute here together and let's make sure that we get non-simulated shared ownership uh, of Bitcoin onto the Lightning Network. I think it's going to be an outstanding achievement uh, and let's make sure we're going to uh, make it happen. Thank you very much and see you on the next show. Bye-bye. <laughs>